Hi everyone, Elite Assassin here, and today I want to talk about the Halo 5 multiplayer, kind of get my first impressions on it. Now, to let you guys know how much I've played, I'm now ranked in Team Arena, Team Slayer, and SWAT, and I basically just played enough matches to get placed. So, roughly 30 matches of Arena I have under my belt, and I have about 4 matches of Warzone. So, not the most, but... You know, just want to get my opinions on what I've played so far. And I haven't beaten the campaign yet, and I'll definitely be doing a commentary about that next week. Because I definitely have some things to say about that. And, uh, <laughs> you know, again, more on that next week. But for right now, the multiplayer. I do have to say, I feel in terms of balance, this is definitely one of the better balanced multiplayers I've played. Definitely one of the more balanced Halos I've played. All the weapons in the sandbox are viable. There's not one weapon that I look at and go, yeah, I'm not going to pick that up. If I see it, I feel like I have a need for it, or I, I have a use for it. Even weapons in the Halo 4, like the suppressor that were just god-awful, and the storm rifle, are all viable. There's not one bad weapon, and I think that's pretty good because it just means that there's a variety of things you can use on the map. You don't always just have to go for your BR, your DMR, carbine, or the power of them, because a lot of the other weapons on the map are all useful. You will find a use of them at some point. And, you know, with the maps they're on, I think most weapons fit in pretty well. I did used to like the Hydra on Regret, so I do kind of uh, miss it there for Slayer. It definitely was a fun weapon. Maybe it was a little too useful because the map is so wide open. But I definitely missed that change from the beta. Overall, I think most of the changes they made from the beta were, were pretty good in terms of maps because, I don't know if you've noticed, but maps like Regret have a little bit of an aesthetic change to them. They definitely changed Eden Empire a little bit with ways to get in the bases, so overall, I think it definitely did a good job improving the map and just overall gameplay, in my opinion, from the beta. I know there's some people out there who think the beta played better. But, I don't know, the strafe speed, the movement, base movement speed, and stuff like that, all those things I think were improvements and things people wanted to improve from the beta. But now that they are, they think the beta plays better. So I don't, I'm not sure on that. But I'm no expert on, you know, game design and things like that, so I'm not going to talk to that. Now, overall, my thought on the AR pistol starts is I do enjoy it. You know, the pistol, I know I was talking to people online, people were saying that they want the BR and... You know, I'm a bit confused because a lot of people wanted the, a good, you know, skillful utility weapon. And the pistol is not easy to use. And it could compete with most weapons in a gunfight. I know some people were saying maybe make it a four shot instead of a five shot. And I can I can kind of see the, the idea behind that and definitely get behind that. But overall, I think the pistol as is, is good. AR is pretty decent. I've never someone who enjoyed AR an AR star, even though this AR is really good. I could do without with, without it, but overall, hey, I'm I'm not gonna argue. I do enjoy the pistol AR stars as a whole, so I'm okay with that. And the one thing about the multiplayer that bugs me a lot is the maps. And you know, by now we all know that the 21 maps that we got, seven of which are forge maps, which to me is a giant giant cop out. Because they've touted how good Forge is and how easy it is to make Forge creations look good. And then they're trying to sell us that seven of our maps are Forge. So you're telling me these maps that were easy to design and easy to build, at least compared to other iterations of Forge, are the same quality of levels that were designed and had an art team behind them. To me, that's, I don't know, that's kind of hard to swallow, to be honest. And it does get me a bit ticked off and I've been that way since the uh, the playlists were announced but you know, I'm not going to consider to make a overall negative commentary that's not who I am but that's one that definitely disappointed me and if you've watched the sprint you will know that we are going to be getting remixes of the rig and of fathom down the line and that our big team maps look to be forge maps created by community cartographers so we know at least of those 18 maps Two of them are remixes already. And I'm hoping to God those big team maps are not counted in those 18 maps because if they're just Forge maps, that's uh, that's a bit bit jarring. 
it, overall, it's funny because it makes me think back to Reach. A lot of people were saying that in competitive Reach, Forge maps were mostly used, and people who would watch competitive Halo would be a little bit disconnected from actual gameplay because most of those maps that were in competitive Halo events were not in the normal rotation. And now we're seeing a bunch of Forge maps in normal rotation. That, but I'm not really sure they're going to be used competitively. So I don't know. It's a weird, it's a weird feeling for me with all these Forge maps. Because in a way, maybe that means we'll see more community Forge maps and just a whole, you know, bunch of maps once Forge launches put into the playlist. But at the same point in time, it feels kind of cheap to have announced 21 maps when seven are Forge. And two of them are basically cut-ups and reskin skies of the Warzone maps. Or, sorry, three of them. So, you know, 14 of your 21... Not 14, sorry. 10 of your 21 really aren't that much. The re... The, um... Oh, shoot. Remix, that's it, sorry. The remix maps don't bother me because they look different enough, in my opinion, and play different enough from their original map that they don't bother me and... Honestly, I kind of enjoy those maps. I actually like Regret more than Truth and Eden a bit more than Empire. So, you know, those don't bother me as much. They do feel like more standalone maps than than just simple cop-outs. And, uh, you know, that that's kind of my thoughts on those things. Overall, the rank system seems to be working pretty well. Definitely ranking a little higher than I thought I would, but that might just be due to lack of some people in certain playlists or people doing campaign or Warzone at the moment. Do miss Social Slayer. I've noticed a lot of people saying it online. A lot of my friends don't even want to touch Arena because they don't like ranked play. Even though the first 10 matches do feel a bit like pub stomps and like social exp- and social experience, it does get a bit harder as you rank, and it feels fair. It just... You know, not everyone wants to try hard all the time. Next up, Warzone. I, again, I only played four matches of Warzone, so I don't have much to say on it. But I, I will say this. I played two matches of Warzone and two matches of Warzone Assault. And I can definitely see potential in both game types, but my personal experience with them has been nothing short of awful. And that's mostly because I played with, with the exception of one game, I played with all random people. And it just goes to show how people on online games, you can put an objective in front of them, you can flash it on their screen, you can take their entire screen up with what they're supposed to do, and 90% of them will not do it. All my Warzone matches have resulted in me being either pushed back to our core for a majority of the time, or trying to fight bosses with no help, or trying to take bases with no help, and just wondering what the other 11 people are doing. The only exception being when I played with my friend Nightmare and with Rapscallion, and go to show, and the top half the team were the three of us, with Nightmare and Raps being one and two, and... Lo and behold, for like five minutes of the match, we were pushed back to our core. Even with three people working together, trying to take out the bosses. You know, they kind of sniped the Warden Eternal from us somehow. But again, the three of us trying the best we could. Three decently skilled players, and we really couldn't affect it at all. Because the rest of our team just... We don't know what they were doing. <laughs> so, I can see it with the whole group of people, and I hopefully we'll be able to play with everybody you know, in the coming days. I can see it being a blast, a great social time, but if you're not with a big group of people, man, it can be a very frustrating time. And all the, you know, the rec packs, I see them working fine. Some of the weapon variants are really cool and really fun to use. And I definitely look forward to jumping into it more, but again, this is my quick first impressions. I definitely want to know, what are you guys' first impressions on Halo 5? I see at first everyone was loving it, and now people are kind of like, okay, we're missing the social, the classic social, you know, element which is very understandable and hopefully with enough pushback we could get that implemented in and hopefully we'll see a social weekend playlist this weekend all right guys thank you so much for listening as always and i'll be back next week with some more commentaries talk to you guys later